So at this point, you should be able to have all the background you need on the photoelectric effect to, pro to solve any type of problem that we throw at you. And you see three on this problem set, and we'll probably give you one more on your next problem set. And the reason we ask you so many questions about the photoelectric effect is because it actually is very similar to ionization energy that we'll talk about later, also problems dealing with photoelectron spectro spectroscopy. So we want to make sure that this is something the entire class is 100% solid on. Uh, sometimes the questions are worded quite differently, so I just want to sum up here the different ways they could be worded. For example, if we talk about photons, of course we also just mean light. Sometimes we refer to this as electromagnetic radiation, and there's several ways that you might be asked this in a problem or that you might be asked to answer. Sometimes we might just directly tell you the energy of the photon. That's probably the easiest scenario, because when we think about work functions, those are usually reported in uh, energy. So since that's the easiest scenario, you can probably be sure it's not going to be too frequently that you're just given the energy, right? That might be too easy. So really, what we'll probably do is instead either give you the wavelength or the frequency, and you'll go ahead and calculate the energy from there. In terms of talking about the electrons, I wanted to point out that in the book and other places, you might see electrons referred to as photoelectrons. That's sometimes confusing for people because it seems like, okay, is it a photon or is it an electron? Uh, I just want to clarify that it is an electron. It's called this just because it's an electron that results when an electron absorbs a photon's worth of energy, so thus it's a photoelectron. And if we talk about electrons or photoelectrons, again, we can describe it in terms of energy. We can talk about velocity. And from there, of course, you can figure out the energy from 1 half mv squared. And actually, we can also describe the electron in terms of wavelength. So you don't actually know this yet from this class. You'll know it by the end of class that electrons can, in fact, have a wavelength. So once we cover it, it will then be fair game to ask these photoelectron uh, spectroscopy or these photoelectric effect questions using the wavelength of the electron. Also to point out, a lot of times you'll see electron volts instead of uh, joules. This is the conversion factor here, just so you all have it in your notes. <coughs> 